Unstable housing projects made by unscrupulous builders, dilapidated buildings ready to collapse. There is a big housing crisis in India's cities which gets exposed every monsoon. On Urban Reality today, we seek some hard answers to a very basic question. How can we fail in our city planning so much that people are willing to risk their lives living in dangerous buildings instead of moving out or finding an alternative? The spotlight today will be on two cities, the National Capital Territory, which has seen two building collapses between Greater Noida and Ghaziabad and has caused deaths of nine people. Also on the Mumbai region, where there have been a few collapses in Thane and out of Mumbai, but thankfully no deaths so far. But how long can we keep tempting fate? Let's begin with Mumbai. My colleague Ashwini joins in with a group of such people who continue to risk their lives every day. The maximum city houses some of the finest buildings in the country. But there are also some really old and dilapidated buildings. And surprisingly, people still continue to stay in these buildings despite knowing that these buildings can pose a great threat to their lives as well as properties. Now, what are some of the reasons why people don't move out? Well, there are multiple reasons. One being sometimes there is an infight between the society members where they are not able to finalize a developer. Sometimes developers don't come forward to redevelop these buildings because of various issues like FSI or the project is not viable for them. And then the last and the most important reason is that most of these buildings come under Maharashtra Rent Control Act in which the tenants need the permission of their landlords to redevelop these buildings and permission is not easily available. And today I am at one such building in Andheri West. You can see this building is really old and dilapidated but people still continue to stay put in these buildings. And joining me now are some of the residents so let's try to understand why are they still staying in this building by putting their life in such danger ab bataiye ye building kitni purani hai aur aap kitne saal se yahan reh rahe hain ye 65 years building purani hai aur hum log yahan pe 30 saal se reh rahe hain aur bmc se kuch notice aayi hai kya bmc se 5 6 baar 6 baar notice aa chuki hai bmc ki notice aa chuki hai aapko fir bhi aap kyun nahi nikal rahe ho abhi 14 saal se to hum log meeting kar rahe hain owner ke sath लेकिन मीटिंग को मीटिंग में कुछ सीरियसली लेता ही नहीं है और हम लोग जब भी बोलते हैं तो बोलते हैं हम करता हूँ करता हूँ खाली बोलता है लेकिन अभी तक उसने कुछ किया नहीं इस इलाके में कितने किराए हैं आसमान को छू रहे हैं किराए और नाला सोपा रहा है विराट तो जा नहीं सकते बच्चे लोग यहाँ पढ़ रहे हैं तो ये हमारी मजबूरियाँ हैं जो इस बिल्डिंग में हम जान हथेली पे लेकर बैठे हुए हैं सो क्लियरली इट्स अ मल्टी लेयर प्रॉब्लम विच नीड्स सम होलिस्टिक सोल्यूशन ओवर टू यू मनीषा Thank you, Ashwini. Well, five to six notices from BMC, and yet the residents are unwilling to vacate that building. Saili Mankekar, senior fellow from Observer Research Foundation, Mumbai, joins us for this discussion, and also Kutub Manviwala, master planner and principal architect of Saifi Barhani Upliftment Project. Uh, Saili and uh, Mr. Manviwala, thank you very much for joining me. Saili, my first question to you is: What's going on here? You have BMC coming out with clear notifications, and here there's a group of residents which is saying, "But you know what? The owner is not even willing to come and sit with us on the table. Where do we go in such an expensive city? This seems seems to be like a no way out sort of a situation." Uh, so the thing is that we have to understand is Mumbai is a very very unique. We are in a very unique situation in Mumbai. The buildings that you are talking about are privately owned buildings, and these buildings are actually where the owners and tenants are paying cess. So the Mahada is actually responsible for repairing these buildings. It's very unique. It's it's the only one in the world. Now the thing is the the cess repair is is so much that. the owners don't see a point putting in money into these buildings because they they say that why should we be putting in building uh, money because the rents that we get are so paltry that there's no point and they actually want the tenants to leave because it's only when the tenants leave that they can they redevelop these dilapidated buildings and the tenants do not have the kind of money to put in money for reconstruction or redevelopment and the government does finds a huge vote bank in the tenants and therefore they don't want to take any drastic ac action of moving these tenants out so you see this is a circle that goes on and on and there is no solution of course there are solutions but that will require a lot of political will
political will. Kutub Manviwala, before we come to the political will, because there's really nothing we can do on this show or you can do or Asaili can do about political will. But my question is that here's a city which has no land redevelopment with extra FSI. How is that not possible? Uh, you know, economically, can't these tenants be given a flat each and also leave enough on the table for the owner and the developer who comes in to make money and make this an economically viable project? Yeah, hi. Uh, number of projects are going on in that fashion where uh, the societies are gathering and or the, the owner is coming up and there's a redevelopment project which is happening. The case where we are doing around 200 buildings in the ASBOT project, which are these dilapidated buildings. And uh, so the trust is taking over the 250 buildings or 200 odd buildings. And then, uh, you know, these dilapidated buildings uh, are being pulled down and new buildings are with better infrastructures are uh, coming up on this. So uh, there are ways mm -hmm. of doing it. We are doing it in a, uh, the project in the form of a cluster redevelopment which is a government by law of 33.9, which allows certain parcel of land to be redeveloped in cluster, where there is some incentive FSI which is given to make the project viable for the uh, uh, landlord as, and the, uh, as or the developer, and also for the tenants who are staying in the building. Mr. Manviwala, just uh, let me go back to Saili and then understand Saili. So, Mr. Manviwala is saying that, look, his own trust is undertaking at least 200 re redevelopments. My question to you is that what is so unique? I mean, there are 133 buildings, at least that's the number we have, which where tenants have refused to vacate. So, is it a tenant problem or the owner problem? And how can we find a solution to it? I mean, how large is a vote bank of people living in these 133 buildings? So it's not only a question of 133 buildings. If you look at it, overall there are about 15,000 such buildings which are in a state of either uh, solid dilapidation or it will uh, you know, come up in the next few years. Like every year you have about 140, 150 buildings that get added to this list. So you have to understand we are talking of people living in about 15,000 such buildings which are you know, not in a great state. So it is a huge vote bank. Second thing, I think the, the issue is that all these schemes that are uh, really put into place are not very uh, pro-tenant in many ways. You know, because the tenants are people mm. who are pay, paying a very paltry rent. Many of them, of course, there are some buildings in South Bombay where they're very rich people, you know, living and still pay, paying paltry rents. But the point is that 75% of the buildings are occupied by tenants who are not so well off, who cannot really, you know, put in the money and kind of shift somewhere. So what's the solution and then? Also, if it is tenant, yes. if, so if I, you're saying that yeah. te these are not pro-tenant buildings, you have actually really hit the nail on its head. How is, yes. uh, there has to be a solution then? So there is one very good thing that has come up now. If you look at the new Mumbai development plan, the, the new development plan actually talks about one million homes you know, that can be added to the whole sum. And this has been talked from this point of view that the old cess building tenants can actually move into these affordable homes that are created. And uh, now mm. it is a question of government taking us, you know, a, a kind of a decision to actually create these one million homes. These homes are ba basically proposed okay. on lands which are NDZ lands, that is no development lands, but out of these eco-sensitive zones, there are some parts which can be actually, you know, um, kind of developed. You're so the talking government about has, the salt pan, you know, the, uh, yes. salt pan lands which have there is, there uh, now is part been of, notified hmm. as, you know, you can make it. Exactly. Okay, let me, let me go, to, go back yes. to Mr. Manviwala. I've got your point. Yes. Mr. Manviwala, uh, yeah. how hopeful are you that these one million homes on, on you know, uh, the newly opened salt pan areas will actually take shape? let's say in five years from now. And th that will be the big solution for Mumbai's dilapidated 15,000 plus buildings. Well, there are a number of solutions which are coming up. This is one of them. But uh, that is where, as and when it comes into the uh, uh, DP and when it comes into the re reality. So uh, you have to see whether you, know, you can, uh, uh, wherever it is possible to repair and restore these buildings and come back to its uh, decent state for living can be done. 
If not, then like how we are doing a cluster redevelopment, some amount of redevelopment can be looked at where it can help the infrastructure of the city also. And the uh, tenants can get a new house, and which is All a right. bigger house uh, if they're staying okay. in very, very small apartments. And they can get better infrastructure, they can get better parking facilities, they can get better uh, buildings to stay in. Okay, so we, we, we basically we have to keep the tenant who are going to lose their homes, find an alternative for them, whether it's in the new areas which are likely to come up or get open for affordable housing or it's redevelopment. They're not going to leave the buildings unless there's a viable plan for them and affordable homes for them to live in. Thank you, uh, Saili and Mr. Manviwala. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. on Urban Reality today. When we come back, we move to the national capital region or Delhi where nine lives have been lost this monsoon with illegal buildings buildings collapsing in Greater Noida and Ghaziabad and urban planners saying this is just the beginning of the mess that NCR is getting into with allowing illegal construction to mushroom in all the urban villages adjoining the capital.